every year when we put the program um, together, um, I have a planning call with each of the speakers. And this is what I tweeted. Fascinating speaker call with Rod Strother from Lenovo. He has a great social media story to tell, and he's here to tell it. Please welcome Rod Strother, Director, Lenovo Center of Social and Digital Excellence from Singapore, to learn what the story is. Rod. Thanks, Barry. <clears throat> I don't have any spider charts, is just the first thing I want to say. So I feel I, I, I wanted to let you down gently on that one. Um, I think it was Matt that said something earlier on about not being an analyst. I'm the other one in the audience who is not an analyst. Um, the guy who was supposed to come and do the presentation is about to become a dad again. Um, he stitched me up on this one. Um, but I have to be honest, I've, I've had a bit of a hand in setting up the Global Analytics Hub in Singapore, and we have a vested interest in it um, with what we do on the social media listening side. So I'm, I'm going to touch a little bit on that, but I'm probably going to focus a little bit more on the social media side. As um, Barry said, I, I head up the Digital and Social Center of Excellence. Um, someone tweeted recently that I had one of the worst job titles. Um, I've yet to find him. He's in the UK somewhere. Um, it is a long job title. Um, but actually, in reality, like a lot of people within Lenovo, I've got a couple of hats. And my other hat is actually that I look after social media marketing um, for the company out of Singapore. Um, it would be remiss of me if uh, I didn't actually talk a little bit about the people that allow me to be here today about Lenovo. I promise I will not do a big product sell. Um, that's not what I'm here to do. Um, but I've got to give you a little bit of, of background in the company. And, and partly that's because I speak at a lot of conferences and people ask me who the hell Lenovo are. Um, oh, you're the company that IBM bought, um, is usually the comment I get. And it, it was something like that, but the other way around. Um, so please bear with me while you, I give you a little bit of information on, on who Lenovo is. Um, yes, we are big. Um, we're all over the world. We're in a number of countries um, and expanding every single day. Um, just in terms of the sort of brands that we sit alongside, um, some great brands up there, Ericsson, um, Tata, for those that are out in India, um, will know the brand really well, um, Delta and American Express. I, I'm really honored to, to sit alongside some of these brands. Um, but where we're going, I think, is probably more interesting. Um, we talk a lot about being in this PC plus era. Partly that's because people say that the PC business is dead or it's stagnant. It's still actually a $200 billion market, which to me still sounds like a sizable market. Um, but what do we mean by PC Plus? Well, that's really where we're going into this phase now where we're looking at smartphones and tablets and wearables, etc. So whilst we will still focus on the PC business, we're moving into a new era and what we've called PC Plus. Um, give you a couple of stats. Um, number three, smart connected devices worldwide. Number two in PC and tablet market share, and as you probably know, we are the number one PC company in the world. Um, the stat that I think is actually more interesting, I think, is the fact that we sell four devices every second. Um, that still always blows me away. The product that you probably know us best for, and I did a quick, not that I'm like that, but I did a quick search around the room when I came in, and I saw that some people have a ThinkPad with them. Hands up in the room who has a ThinkPad? Not as many as I would have liked. <laughs> Hands up in the room who has one of these, which if you're in India or you're in the Ukraine or Russia, etc., you might actually know us for selling smartphones. So this is Indonesia. Um, recently in Indonesia, we were selling more smartphones than we were selling um, PCs, which is an impressive stat when you consider that Indonesia is what fourth largest population in the world. So anyway, I will. Uh, I promised you that it would be a very quick product background. So what I really want to talk about is actually in social media. Um, where's social media within our organization? Um, someone said, and I can't remember who it was this morning, that said about, uh, I think it was the chat from Philips, was talking about the fact of, of social being completely integrated with the rest of the organization. Well, this is how it normally works for us, is that you have um, the brand with an S underneath it. Um, you normally have your television, your PR, everything sitting around in that circle. And then social media sitting somewhere to the outside. And, and we get asked a lot, what's your social media strategy? I think the more that as brands you get asked what your social media strategy is, the more that it sounds like it's something separate. Whereas in reality, 
what we should be looking at in my book is a, a socially optimized comm strategy. So that when your comms people on the brand side, when your comms people are looking at their marketing campaigns, social media is an immediate part of that. Um, being an ex-agency guy for my sins um, and spent a long time on the agency side, I know the number of clients I used to talk to who would look at social and digital as being something that happened over there. Um, and those people would come and ask them for permission to get involved in the brand. We've tried to change that within Lenovo and really put, really put social media at the heart of everything that we do. So when you're thinking about putting out a product video, you're not thinking about, I want a viral video. You're really thinking about developing a video that's going to get engagement. So start from that part. Um, how do we manage all of this? How do we actually sort of support the rest of the organization? Well, as Barry said, we have a center of excellence based out of Singapore. And there are four key things that we look at in here. Content, social listening and analytics, campaigns, and guidance, guidance for our markets. Um, and that works across all the business units. I've had conversations with people from the investor relations team all the way through to the HR team, and then obviously all of the, the product business units somewhere in between. So we really do try and work right across the organization. I've had arguments with a number of people in the organization who see us as a vertical. And I think if social media is going to be successful um, within an organization, you really got to be a horizontal. And that's, you know, I think that that's the most effective use of social in the org, is to make sure that it works horizontally rather than vert vertically just in a silo. Um, in terms of the geos that we work with, um, EMEA, AP, and America's group, we work with really closely. China's still a tough one for us. For anybody who's, who's based out in Asia, I've been out there almost 20 years, and it's still difficult because you still get the, well, China's different, and we know China's different, but then so is South America different, so is the UK different, so is Germany different. Um, I think we're different just like each other. Um, the one difference, obviously, over in China is that they have very different social media channels, but they still do the same thing. They still try and get engagement with their target audience. So that's an area that we're, we're working really closely with to try and build within the organization. So how do we look at it? How do we look at social? Well, what we're really trying to build towards is what we've called true engagement. Now, normally when I present, I put up a, a silver bullet at the beginning to say this isn't a silver bullet presentation because by the end, you'll tell me all the mistakes we're currently making. And I'd appreciate that over drinks later on. Um, free, free consultation is always good. Um, but this is how we normally see it, is you've got the brand talking at people. Traditionally, that's how communications have worked. Um, and then you start going into sort of dialogue marketing, where you've got talking with customers and talking with your target audience. What we're really aiming at is having people talking with people and then us playing the part of the enabler. I know that, and I apologize for the cliche, but I know that we talk of social being like a cocktail party and trying to come up to people at a cocktail party and immediately talk about yourself. And really what you're trying to do is listen to the conversation that's going on and then try and add value. And that's essentially what we're trying to do as a brand is listen to the conversations that are going on and then come and add value, come and be relevant. Um, and that's gonna be around authentic engagement. So we see ourselves being more about being an enabler. So it's that move from being a brand that does social, as I said, to a brand that is social. Engaging the audience, I, I, I find this an interesting one, again, moving from the agency side to the client side, because the immediate thing on the client side is how do I push my product? So why are you interested in laptops, smartphones, tablets? Why? Let me talk to you about my ThinkPad. That sounds kind of rude, but you know what I mean. Um, maybe we should talk about the vibe and the yoga, our smartphone, our yoga product. Or maybe we should just be ramming it down your throat talking about the brand. Well why not actually start on the right-hand side? Make sure my left and my right. Start on the left-hand side and talk about the passions. Actually find out what people are interested in and then see how I can be relevant in that conversation. So what we're trying to do at the moment is get to that left-hand side and then work backwards to the product and find where the product connection is. How we're delivering that is through um, and I, I learned a great word was nexus. I always wondered what that middle bit was in a Venn diagram. Someone explained to me, that's the nexus. Um, and that's what we're doing within this nexus. We've set up this thing that we call social pulse, which is really that joining part between the global analytics hub 
um, and our worldwide social media team. Fortunate that we both sit in Singapore and right next to each other. Um, as you'll see, visually, we've got our, and a very bad picture taken by an iPhone probably. Um, we've got that, <laughs> apologies, apologies anybody from Apple. Um, shouldn't say that, I was kidding. Um, you've got the uh, command center, the standard command center in the middle. Um, and then what we did was we actually branded it up as Social Pulse because we didn't want to call it, you know, when we send out emails, for example, we didn't want to send emails out from Worldwide Social Media Team, nor did we want to send them out from the Global Analytics Hub and feel that ownership of the data, ownership of the insights was coming from one team or the other team. Because in reality, they're coming from both of us. We've got to, the two teams have got to work very closely together in order to be able to drive these insights. Now in my team, we've got people who are responsible for managing content, um, social analytics, um, but in the global analytics team, they've got data scientists in there. I sit in the room and a little bit like today, when I was asked about the conference, they said, what's this conference that you're going to? I said, it's about 200 really intelligent people in a room together, plus me. Um, and I feel like that when I sit in the room with the Global Analytics Hub and I've got these data scientists sitting around me. Um, I try and make jokes and sound interesting. Um, and these guys just, what they bring to the table really enhances what we're doing as a worldwide social team as well. And that's that bit, the nexus. Um, so what have we done with it? Well, at the moment, I'll be perfectly honest, we're scratching the surface with this. Um, we're, we're doing what I'm sure you guys in the room would call um, the very beginner's level of real-time marketing. And we're trying to use it, in one sense, to humanize the brand. Um, because people don't always know Lenovo, as I said at the beginning. Um, and if you want to know something about Lenovo, well, why don't I introduce the brand to you in a slightly different way? So we talk a lot about humanizing the brand within the social team. I've um, got an interesting example of it. Um, we were releasing a new product called the Horizon, and it's called an interpersonal PC. It's about this size. And it was developed out of the team in China who found that people were going off into different parts of the house. I'm sure it's exactly the same here. Different, but exactly the same. Um, going to different parts of the house to go on their PC or to go on the smartphone or go on their tablet. And basically the family was all over the house. And what they wanted to do was to build a product that would get the family around together again, basically around the table. Now this product allows, you could sit over here and be doing video, I could be sitting over here and I can be doing email. So it allows you to do that. We announced the product online and uh, we put up some posts, etc. There was this lady called Melissa um, in Cleveland and Melissa posted up, can't wait for the horizon to come out. And it was around about the fact that it was a touch screen. Now Melissa's son, Kieran, is on the autism spectrum. Now, one of the things that we didn't know, and when we were developing this product out, it wasn't a deliberate thing, but for people with autism, touch is an incredibly important thing, and it allows them to make a connection, and make a very deep connection. And she said this product could make a difference in the family. Now, our team were doing their, their listening, they were spending time on the channels, having a look at things, and this comment came up. And our community manager who had seen it, brought it up and said, look, I, I'm going back and forward with this woman over the last couple of days, and I've been talking to her, and I want to give her a product um, for no other reason than the fact that I think it will make a difference in her family. And she told us the story, so we said, okay. But she said, I want to do it, and I want to surprise her. So we talked about having a Lenovo surprise. So she then started talking to her husband um, and started organizing it with her husband to deliver this product to her. So, Sorry, the video, if you can show this. This is the story of how we did it. We'd been wanting to do something like this for a long time, and when we came up with the Lenovo surprise idea, uh, we just really wanted to blow someone's mind and, and you know, give them a, an unforgettable gift. So we're here in uh, downtown Cleveland, beautiful downtown Cleveland. We've been at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this morning, and now we're headed south, about an hour south of Cleveland, to a town called Ravenna. We're going to go present the Lenovo surprise to a uh, very deserving uh, family, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, to rocking their world and surprising them on a Friday afternoon. Hi. Hi. Are you Melissa? I am. We're 
from Lenovo. Nice to I meet you. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. I'm Gavin. Nice to meet you. Nice How to are meet you? you too. Hi, Justin. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Gavin. Help. <laughs> yeah, you get one of them, Justin. All right, this you, thing's called Horizon. Like? It's called the Horizon. See, you guys are first. some of the first people in the whole world to have one, too. That's worth noting. That's, That's Lenovo. That's who we work for. Can you say Lenovo? Lenovo. Yeah. Lenovo Social. We are here uh, in Ohio in the living room of Melissa and Justin. And uh, thanks for having us in your home, you guys. Thanks for coming. I just, it's I'm our, still floored. It's, it's our pleasure. It's a thrill to be here. So the reason that we chose you guys, just so you know, is because you're a family. And so uh, Melissa and Justin and their son Kieran uh, live here. And this is a family PC. We call it an interpersonal computer. There's a couple of things in there. Was one, and uh, there's a cynicism. I, I know when you work on the agency side, I've been there. Um, th there's a cynicism, and when we showed this to the agency, first thing they said was, uh, said, how many takes was it? Um, and I asked the cameraman, I asked um, Joe, the guy that shot it, how many takes? And he said it was one. And I don't know if you actually watch it, but when you're watching it, uh, other than the fact that she has this very high-pitched, <laughs> excitable voice, was her hands were shaking. Um, and Gavin really did, he's our, our global social editor, um, and he really did turn up to the door. The point was, and I thought it was interesting, was she was following where we were going. She had no idea we were coming to her house. And all her friends were following the tweets online and saying, they're coming to see you. This is because you've been contacting them. She had no idea that we're coming. There was a slight suspicion. Her husband kept completely confidential on it um, when they got to the house. There's a little bit, if, and if you take the time to have a look at it on YouTube, there's a little bit later on where Kieran does this with his hands. And apparently that's, in autism, that's him, he's, he's engaging with it and he's enjoying it. And he did this with his hands and it's a beautiful moment in it. Um, I was asked at conference recently when I, I showed this, how much money did you make out of this though? How much more product did you sell? And the honest answer is, I don't care. Um, should I, and I know this is a metrics, <laughs> it's a whole metrics summit, and it's about measurements. But really, did it make that, that much difference? And I know it's about measuring um, the value of your mother um, and that great example that was given earlier on. <sighs> the value of this, I can tell you how many replies and how many tweets and how many people it was shared with and everything else. But I just think it was about making a connection with the target audience. And for me, that was far more important than everything else in there. I'll get crucified afterwards on this one, but I'm sure. Um, Okay, something a little bit more commercial on this. Um, we had done, um, we brought in the whole team. We had the, the analytics hub, we had the social media guys all sitting together when we did CES in January, which is a massive event for us. Um, and it's interesting, we don't actually go to the CES show. We put a display up in a hotel. We don't have the same money as some of our competitors. Um, if, if you look at Samsung's budgets, we're just not there in the same sort of scale. So we've got a box clever when it comes to these events. We tested it out at CES. We'd also done Mobile World Congress um, in Barcelona. And we've been testing out just listening to the conversations that were going on and seeing if we could get involved. Now the problem is every other bloody tech company is doing the same thing because that's where you expect to find them. Um, so we wanted to do something a little bit different and do the Oscars. Um, has anybody not seen this tweet? Please put your hand up, embarrass yourself if you really haven't seen the tweet. Um, the Ellen selfie, um, I think it still is the most retweeted and everything, um, the most successful selfie. So our guys, I'm sitting there at my desk and our guys are, are watching the Oscars. I'm not sure that constitutes work. But they were watching the Oscars, watching all the discussion going on, and one of them just shouted up, there's this tweet from Ellen, and she talks about Bradley Cooper's arm not being long enough. I think there's a product uh, message could go out on the back of this. So we picked up, we have a, what we call um, Lenovo Vibe, um, and the, the Vibe Z, the big selling point of the Vibe Z is it takes wide angle selfies, which is the big benefit of it. So I think, no long arms needed when you have my vibe um, for Bradley Cooper, and just tweeted that out. Now, did we put any paid behind this would probably be the question. We didn't, should we have? Maybe. Um, but what happened was the media picked it up. And I think, I mean, I, I'm sure you've all been to conferences and listened to the stories of um, Oreo, 
and you've heard the Super Bowl tweet and the fact that it was part of 100 days. What was real magic about the Oreo tweet was not so much what Oreo did, it was what the media did. And it was the fact that the media picked that up. And I've told the case study story time and time again. And that's what we were really reliant on here, was the media picking this up and then amplifying it for us. And that was far more important for us on this one. So a couple of lessons learned. Hopefully I'm gonna hit my mark because I know you're all looking to have one more session and then drinks. Um, I think as I said at the beginning, having social at the heart of everything that you do, that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to position it as that, as that. I know for the, you know, I've been running the social team now for the past three years. Um, and I know prior to that, social never even got a, a seat at the table. Um, now we're one of the key discussion points at the table when we kick off any kind of campaign. Um, building the right team has been important for us, both in the analytics hub and in the social media team. But more importantly is probably having the right attitude and an attitude of fail fast, being brave enough to be able to do things and get it wrong um, and then try not to repeat that moving forward. Humanizing the brand, we're trying to use our listening in order to do that at the moment. We are obviously trying to use it to find out how big a tablet screen really people want to have, um, what features they want to have on a smartphone, etc. But at the moment, we've been using it to scrape the surface on this humanizing the brand. Always on listening. Um, we'd like to be there. Um, at the moment, we have three people doing this on a global basis. Three people isn't enough. Um, one speaks Russian, one speaks Hindi, um, uh, they all speak English. Um, the other one speaks Mandarin. Um, that doesn't cover all the languages that we need to cover. It doesn't keep us in every single market. Um, but it's the budget that we've got. It's the bandwidth that we've got. So that's what we can do right now. Um, and this other thing about amplifying what works and, and, and drop what doesn't. Um, I've been asked before, what's the science behind what we amplify? It's more art than science for us right now. One of the things that I'm hoping to go away from this conference with is somebody to, to drag me to one side and say, Rod, here's what you should be measuring. We've solved it already. Um, and this is what you should be doing with Lenovo going forward into the future. So open field, guys. Anybody wants to do that with me later on, I'll buy you a beer in the free bar. Um, <laughs> se 17 years in Asia, I haven't lost my Scottish roots, obviously. Um, but I just wanted to finish with saying thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you very man. much. <clears throat>